bulletin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all. Oh. What, you, what you're thanking them for? Oh. I said, what you're thanking them for? Oh. I don't know what you're thanking them for. Oh. Oh. That's what I'm thanking them for. Oh. Always done for me. Oh. Yeah. I want to tell the world if you don't never do nothing else. You don't hear me, I said, if he don't ever do nothing else, if he don't ever make another way, if he don't ever open another door, if he don't ever turn anything else around, he's already. I said, he's already. The question was asked, is there a word from the Lord? And the answer is yes. There is a word. Did you bring your Bibles to church today? Amen. Whether your Bibles are on your smart devices or whether you have a tangible Bible, come on, let me see. Did you bring the sword today? Yeah. You can't fight the devil if you ain't quit. Yeah. Amen. Did you bring your Bibles today? The prayer seems yeah. to come up. We are not ashamed. If you will, stand to your feet with your Bibles in your hands. Yeah. We're going to wave our Bibles. We brought our water to the church this morning. Yeah. We're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why? Because it is the power of the salvation of everyone. We know that we're going to leave this earth, but we have an assurance that because of the word of God, we're going to have heaven. That's it, my head. I don't believe that. Hallelujah. And at midnight, yes. Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, yes. somebody shout suddenly. suddenly. Suddenly there was a great earthquake. Yes, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. Mm -hmm. And immediately, somebody shout immediately. Immediately. All the doors were open, and everyone's bands were loosed. Verse number 26 again, it says, and suddenly. There was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately, all the doors were open, and everyone's bands were loosed. Today, God has given me a prophetic word for the Rivers of Life Church. He's giving me something that will empower you. Amen. Something that will push you a little further Amen. along your journey. Amen. God told me to tell you that what he's getting ready to do uh -huh. is going to happen suddenly Amen. and Amen. immediately. Amen. Yeah, 
God, 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 God's word for you today is suddenly and immediately you may be seated in his presence. Today's word comes after a year of process. Last year, about February, March time frame, the world began to go through new processes. Mm -hmm. As we began to uh, get acclimated to a pandemic world, amen, to a quarantine world, we had to go through processes. Yeah. If your business was going to stay open, it had to go through processes. If the nail salon, the barbershop, the hair salon were going to remain open, they had to go through a barbicide process. Amen. If churches were going to uh, reach the masses while our doors were closed, we had to go through processes. Amen. One of the things that, that I shared, amen, at, at the 10 o'clock service this morning was that before we could offer virtual services, the church had to go through a process. A construction at the church had to happen. Amen. Because some bandwidths don't come through telephone lines, they come through copper lines. Yeah, yeah. And so you had to have a process. They had to construct, they had to dig underground and give you what you needed. Amen. Somebody shout process. Amen. Amen. But as I began to contemplate and think to the Lord and talk to the Lord, amen, about all of these processes, God said something to me that I want to share with you. God says that sometimes, sometimes, life will allow you the opportunity to go through processes. It will allow you the opportunity to go through stages. You will go through steps. Step one, then step two, step three. Three, a cancer patient goes through steps. They get their diagnosis and they get further consultation. Then they got to go through chemotherapy. Then they got to go through radiation. They got to go through all of these processes. Somebody shout processes. Process. However, God told me to tell you that although it, sometimes we go through processes and stages, don't forget that you got a God who has the ability when he wants to yeah. to do things suddenly and immediately. Just look at somebody and just say suddenly, suddenly. and immediately. And immediately. Yeah, yeah. God still has the power <laughs> yeah. to do things suddenly yeah. and immediately. Can you just put that in the atmosphere today? God's going to do it. Suddenly and immediately. Come on, lay your hands on yourself and say, God's going to do it. Suddenly and immediately. As many of you know, today's message comes from my most favorite passage of scripture. Here, the Apostle Paul is traveling up and down dusty roads just to do good. He is spreading the good news of Jesus Christ. He's ministering to the lost, the Gentiles, the sinners, and to the Jews who will listen. He and his ministry partner Silas have journeyed and ministered throughout Persia and the region of Galatia. Specifically, they have entered Derby and Lystra and exited round about Neapolis, the capital city of that portion of Macedonia. They are about their father's business. Oh, However, when we read, when we read and study yeah. Acts chapter 16 and the preceding and subsequent chapters after, we find that they are ministering all by themselves. You see, my friends, Paul and Silas were invited to this region, but they were never given the right hand of fellowship. Most of the leaders of that day didn't even speak to Paul and Silas. They were not cordial. They did not become friends with Paul and Silas. And so the Charlotte, this is strange to me because they begged them to come. In an urgent way, they called on Paul and Silas. They, they urged them to, to come and share this good news. They were beckoned, if you will, as if there was a gospel emergency. However, they were never received with open arms. They were invited, I need you to catch this, invited but not welcomed, called on but never embraced, sent for but never 
the guests at dinner. Amen. They were outcast when they arrived in this region. Yeah. It is no wonder to me that once we get to the end of the chapter, these two men are locked up behind bars. Amen. Because they started out as unlike men. They began their journey as spectacles in the leadership's eyes. They were considered heretics because they were talking about a man that had gotten up out of the grave. Nobody, nobody had risen from the dead before. Nobody, nobody, amen, had healed people and done the things that Jesus did. And these men were around there talking about this man named Jesus. It's no wonder they ended up in jail. The religious leaders were looking for a reason to lock them up. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But thanks be unto God that the text says, and suddenly <laughs> there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prison was shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loose. What are you trying to say, Pastor? I'm trying to get you to see. They locked them up. Mm -hmm. But it was all a part of God's plan to bring a suddenly and immediately to their lives. Can I drop a bomb on you right here? Sometimes God will allow all hell to break loose in your life that he might bring us suddenly <laughs> and immediately in your life. Sometimes the devil will allow, I mean God will allow the devil to pick on you, to bruise you, to tarnish your reputation, to kick you down when you're already down, just so God can prove a point that he can bring a suddenly and, and immediately in your life. Somebody just shout that this afternoon, suddenly and immediately. My friends, Paul and Silas were not welcomed nor received on this region. And we too must understand that on this ministry journey, we will not always be received. There will not be always doors of ease and, and flowery beds of ease. I want to tell you today that there will be many days of rejection. Am I preaching? The world will throw rocks at us. People will talk about us. They will discredit our cause, discredit our ministries. They will refuse to embrace our gifts. And sometimes they will do everything but assist and get along with us. Call us everything but a child of God. The world will take from us and bash us in the same instant. But in these moments, I believe we should remember. Remember what Jesus said. Jesus said, if you are of the world, the world will love his own. But because you are not of the world, and I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will also keep yours. I want the church to know today the world is not supposed to like us. The world is not designed to accept us. The world is not supposed to be in our corner. And as the church, you can't beat yourself up on folk that don't like you, folk that don't appreciate you, folk that don't embrace you. You've got to stay focused on what God has called you to do because it's supposed to be that way. Look at somebody say it's supposed to be that way. The church cannot change who the church is so other folk can like the church. We are the church of the living God. We got standards. It's holiness or hell. It's righteousness. Y'all hear what I'm saying? You can't change the church. The church is the church of the living God. Upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. This is the church of the living God. A Bible believing, Bible talking, tongue talking. And Holy Ghost feel baptized, fire feeling. This is the church of the living God. We find ourselves, amen, in situations like this. Amen. We got to follow after the pattern of Jesus. Jesus said, As you go preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely have ye received, freely give. Provide neither gold, nor silver, nor brass in your purchase, nor script for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staff for the workman is worthy of his meat. And into, 
and into whatsoever city or town ye shall enter, inquire who is in it that is worthy, and there abide till you go hence. And when you come into a house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace be upon it. But if it not be worthy, let your peace return back to you. And whatsoever, whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your word, when you depart out of that house or depart out of that city, shake off the dust from your feet. I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but I need to stop by a little while and tell you that God is going to send a sudden man and immediately your way. And you can't worry about who ain't liking you, who ain't appreciating you. You got to shake it off and get ready. I said you got to shake it off and get ready. You got to shake it off and get ready. Don't no, worry about what they say and shake it off and get ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Shake it off and get ready. Tell somebody to shake it off and get ready. Tell somebody to shake it off and get ready. You ain't got time to worry about it. Shake it off and get ready. You ain't got time to be stressed out. Shake it off and get ready. You ain't got time to be worrying yourself. Pulling your hair out. God said, shake it off and get ready. Then I'm getting ready to send a son of me. Have it immediately your way. Tell somebody else shake it off and get ready. I said, 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 shake it off and get ready. God's getting ready to sit in your way. He's sitting your breakthrough. Sitting your miracle. You need to shake it off and get ready. I said, you may not always be welcome just as Paul and Silas were not. But you must understand the purpose for which you do what you do. You must stay true to your conviction and what the Lord has commissioned your hands to do. Why? Because God is getting ready to send us suddenly and immediately your way. God, can I drop something on you? God got something up his sleeve. My God have mercy. If all the hell and all the turmoil I've been through in the last six months is any indication of what God's getting ready to do, he's getting ready to blow my mind. He's getting ready to knock my socks off. He's getting ready to turn my world upside down. I wish I had a church in here that could say, Solomon! Of those cities. They were outcasts. 
the downtrodden, the crazy followers of Jesus Christ. However, God still had a plan. Isn't it a good thing to know that God still has a plan? God was going to use their lives uh -huh, to bring about a sudden and immediate miracle for them. My friends, the majority of the crowd would dismiss Paul and Silas. They would consider their good news to be nonsense. They didn't want men to believe in this Jesus. They didn't want men to believe that Jesus died, that he rose, and that he's coming again. They didn't want men to know about a Jesus that walked through the door, sat down with the disciples, and broke bread. They didn't want them to know about a God, a man that after he died, the sun blacked out, the moon turned into blood, the rock began to rent every dead man in Jerusalem, got out of the grave and began to walk the streets of they didn't want people to know about a man who raised Lazarus from the dead and two fish and five loaves of bread. Amen. But what can I drop another bomb on you today? Amen. People don't have to believe what you believe. They don't have to accept what you accept. They don't have to trust in the God that you trust in. But when God sent a sudden and immediate miracle your way, it's going to be them same folk that said it wouldn't happen. It wouldn't turn around. It wouldn't work out. It's going to be them same folk that turn around and come back and identify that the God you serve is big, bad, large, and in charge. I wish I had a witness in here that can look back down the line and say they counted me out. They threw me away. They said they won't go work. They said I was nothing. They said I was good for nothing. Oh, but little did they know I, I got a sudden and immediate God. Hallelujah. And he showed up. Tell somebody he showed up. He showed up. He showed up. He showed up. And guess what? He showed up when he showed up. Hallelujah. And he made sure. And suddenly <laughs> there was a great earthquake yeah. so that the foundation of the prison was shaking. Yeah. And immediately, somebody shout immediately. Yeah. All the doors were open. My friend God had a plan for Paul and Silas. And this plan included a sudden and immediate miracle. And I'm not sure who I'm preaching to today, but God told me to tell you that He has included a sudden yeah. and immediate miracle in your story as well. Can you lay hands on yourself about three minutes, three seconds, if you will? Amen. Lay your hands on yourself and say, The sudden is coming my way. Oh my God. Lay your hands on yourself again and say, An immediate is coming my way. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. The good things all preach past the now. God is getting ready to send a sudden. My friend Paul and Silas moved throughout this region and God made his plan even more clear to them. Yeah. He continually moved them closer to their sudden and immediate miracle. Yeah. This included a short stop at the house of a woman named Lydia. Lydia was a native of Thyatira. However, life brought her to Philippi. Yeah. But Philippi was a place that Paul happened to be ministering. Yeah. And it was here that she met Paul, gave her life to Christ, yeah. and accepted salvation and the deliverance. Yeah. Can I drop something on the elevator? Yeah. I got a whole bunch of bones. We're going to be all on fire by the time I get out of here today. Hallelujah. But now that, this next bomb that I want to drop on you today is this right here. Sometimes God will hook you up with folk that will push you closer to your sudden and your immediate. Lord have mercy. I said I'm going to say that again. Sometimes God will hook you up with folk that will get you closer to your sudden there and immediately. I know a lot of y'all wondering how I in the world am I linked up with these folk? Why in, how in the world did I get that? Oh Lord, why did you send me over here? But can I tell you why God sent you over here? It's because he knew this was the place that was going to get you closer to your sudden <laughs> And your immediate look, you left your friends, you left your kinship, you left folk that were comfortable, you left comfortable churches where you knew everybody, where you could get along, where you had position, where you were getting salaries, because God said, Oh, this place is the place that will go push you closer to your son and your immediate. Tell somebody I'm in the right place now. I'm in the right place now. I used to wonder, I used to question, I used to wonder. Lydia, 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 Lydia,
in Philippi. Now Lydia was had an honest call. She had an honest trade. She was a seller of purple. Even it was purple cloth, purple dye, or purple silk. She was a wholehearted believer of the Lord Jesus Christ. She was devoted to God. Lydia was faithful to God. Her religion before the Lord opened up her heart. She worshiped God according to the knowledge she had. And she was one of the devout women that Paul had to minister to. He was ministering outside the city, but he still had somebody to talk to. Can I preach in the house? They might try to shut you up. You might not have the grand audience that you once had, but God will give you somebody. <laughs> God has mercy. He'll give you somebody to talk to. Am I preaching in the house today? Amen. My friends, amen. Lydia, 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 amen, brought Paul and Silas close to who she was. Amen. When Paul and Silas could not minister in the city, minister, the people like Lydia made sure on the outskirts of town they had something. Am I preaching the river of life today? On the outskirts of town, they made sure there was somebody to listen. She became a faithful worshiper of God. She found time to improve advantages for her soul. She gave attention to Paul as he ministered by the wayside. She took to heart his preaching and dared to believe on this man called Jesus. She was baptized and ensured that everyone in her house was baptized as well. Yeah. Amen. And so she wanted Paul to understand her loyalty to the ministry before he lied down. She told him you can come into my house and rest, but I want you to know that I'm in this thing for the long haul. Yeah. She would not allow them to leave her sight. She was she was devoted and faithful to Paul and Silas. However, the day came when Paul and Silas had to leave Lydia's house. Upon leaving Lydia's house, a man they came across a woman who was possessed with a spirit of divination. This young girl was controlled by an evil spirit. This evil spirit dictated what the girl was to say and how the girl was to act. It dictated ambiguous answers to those who consulted her. The evil spirit controlled her mind. It made her tell things of the future for money, even if they were lies. It caused this woman to pervert the gift of prophecy and use whatever means to foretell or predict things of the future that were not even true. She was a present day fortune teller, a palm reader. She had an evil intent, the ill words that came out of her mouth. Her superiors used it to their advantage. They took possession and took advantage of somebody that was possessed with a devil just so they could gratify their own vain desires. Never mind how many lies she was telling. All they were thinking about were the dollar bills. However, one day, this woman got delivered by the power of God. And her deliverance was the reason Paul and Simon were locked up in the first place. After leaving Lydia's home, the woman taunted Paul and Silas. She followed behind them, harassing them. She stalked them. She nitpicked at them. She poked the bear, if you will, continually making fun of their position in the kingdom. She sought to make light of who God had called them to be. In a very sarcastic way, she declared, these are the sons of the Most High God. These are the sons of the Most High God. These are the sons of the Most High God. All throughout the city, just harassing these men, picking on these men, chugging these men. These are the sons of the Most High God. These are the sons of the most high. Hey girl, these are the sons of the most high. Amen. Come on. Come see. Amen. These are the sons of the most high God. But Paul got sick and tired of being sick and tired. Is there anybody in here that's sick and tired of being sick and tired? Tired of stressing myself out. Tired of wearing myself to death. Tired of staying sleep at night. Looking in the mirror saying, how did I get in the Bible said that Paul got sick and tired of being sick and and he cast that spirit out of that girl. But can I tell you, he messed up now. Why did he mess up? Because when he cast the spirit out of the girl, the paycheck stopped. The people were making money off of her evil spirit. And when 
destiny. And so the Bible said that they went and found Paul and Silas. And when they got him, they locked him up. Yeah. Yes, Put him in jail. Uh -huh. No clear route to freedom. Uh -huh. And no chance of parole. Yeah, Didn't give them an ankle bracelet. <laughs> Tell them to be in by night. <laughs> but they locked them up. Yes, <laughs> and threw away the key. <laughs> but I'm so glad. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, glory. Yes. You can lock me up. Yes, sir. Lock my heart up. Yes, sir. Lock my emotions up.
last steps. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right now. Woo, please. Yes. Can we do the last steps? Right now. So we can always stand alive.
Father, we're here today. At the middle of the crossroad. Looking at what you have allowed. And trusting in what you said. We're looking at what you've allowed. And trust in what you said. Looking at what you allowed. But trust in what you said. Father, we're praying today that our little life has grown us some curveballs. We ask in the name of Jesus, God, that you send a sudden to our way. It can be a sudden reminder, an immediate reminder. It can be a sudden healing or an immediate healing. A sudden breakthrough. Immediate miracle. We don't know. We don't even care. Just send it to me. Because what you send to us, we know it's going to be for our best interest. You're not going to give us what we want. You're going to give us what we need. So send us a sudden and immediate. Immediate. Think that before. We promise to trust you. Never doubt you. Yes. Never turn our backs on you. But keep our hands in your hands. Yes. As long as we shall live. You're going to do it. Son. We praise you for it in Jesus' name.
the Spirit of the Lord is so high, we ain't worry about opening the doors of the church. We're going to yield and get on out of here. We'll never get out of here. Amen. Everybody's coming in their own way in Jesus' name.